Hey everyone, today I have really exciting news for us hair loss sufferers to report on and that there's a possible cure for hair loss coming. Now, I'll be honest here, I am not a healthcare practitioner, you guys know that, but I will link down reputable sources down below that have interviewed the sort of researchers and doctors and what they have to say about all of this. And of course, double check things that you hear on YouTube on your own. I leaned really heavily on an article from today, which uh, again, I will put down below. And in this article, they uh, interviewed the lead scientist and also some other hair loss doctors and dermatologists, and I will be reporting on that here. So what's the breakthrough already? Okay, scientists in this study, which came from University of California, Irvine, have located a molecule that's called SCUBE3, and that's written SCUBE3, and this molecule has been found to be connected to hair growth in dormant hair follicles. The thinking is right now that this molecule, SCUBE3, could be responsible for reawakening, regrowing hair that may have gone dormant in your hair follicle if you have androgenetic alopecia, which is also known as male pattern baldness or female pattern baldness. Now the news about this interestingly has been coming out in drips and drabs. It was not like a hugely reported media story. And I think I know the reason for that, which I will discuss later on. This new breakthrough was reported in Developmental Cell, which is a, a scientific journal. And the research was done on mice and mouse hair follicles. However, interestingly, it also worked, the SCUBE3 molecule, in growing hair in human hair follicles that have been grafted on to mice. And I know that sounds gross, and I guess it is, um, but it has not been tested on actual humans yet, so I think that that's an important distinction to note right now. I don't know if you know this, but you're born with all the hair follicles you're ever gonna have, and when you do suffer from something like androgenetic alopecia, that means that they're still there. You still have those hair follicles that you were born with. They've just gone dormant, kind of like they've gone to sleep. The lead researcher has explained this as sort of like having these little 3D printers. Like, so if you can imagine each hair follicle being like a 3D printer, it's like the 3D printer is there and it's sort of, doesn't have any instructions, nobody's pressed the start button on it, and it's just, it, it's not gonna print anything. SCUBE 3 works by telling these molecules to start printing, so to speak, AKA making hair, and it is almost like, it is like pressing the start button on a 3D printer that has just been on standby. So what happened in the actual study is they used these mice, and in these mice, they made their hair follicles grow go dormant, which is what you would experience with androgenetic alopecia, and then they were given micro-injections of this SCUBE 3. These micro-injections consequently made the hair grow in really thick in these mice. And then they even tried it by grafting human hair follicles into the mice, like I said, and that worked too. So my thinking about why we haven't heard that much about this sort of in the media, there are no active treatments right now, and so I think that that is the important thing to note, and even the researchers and other people seem to think, from what I'm hearing, that it's about five years away. And when they say five years away, in my experience, it often means many more than that, that just they like to throw five years out there. The lead researcher in the study, who is a scientist, not like a hair loss doctor, thinks that potential treatments could be like something that you get two to three times a year. Now from all the research that I did, what was not clear to me was how this treatment might be delivered. I'm not sure if it would be also micro injections like they did on the mice, or if it would be something that you would take internally like a pill. So possibly a localized injection somewhere in the scalp and post possibly something systemic we don't know yet. Now the typical treatments, as you may or may not know, you probably do know if you're watching me here, for um, androgenetic alopecia and lots of other types of hair loss is the first line of defense very often is minoxidil, also known as Rogaine. In men, sometimes that is paired with finasteride. In women, women don't usually take finasteride. They would sometimes take spironolactone, sometimes, not always, of course, that would be something you would discuss with your doctor. But minoxidil is also indicated for women to use as well. And as you guys know, I am a long time minoxidil user. I did look for conflicts in the study because that was, of course, interesting of interest to me. And I didn't find any, but I did find that the researchers filed a patent on this molecule, which is, I guess, not surprising at all, but it was not funded as far as I could tell anyway from any big pharma type companies. If you're enjoying this so far, please remember to subscribe. I will be reporting on hair loss news if this is something of interest to you guys, and don't forget to like as well for the same reason. So what do hair loss doctors and dermatologists have to say? Well, they were interviewed as well in this article that again, linked down below. I'm just gonna read this now because I cannot possibly memorize it. Dr. Brian Abatan, director of skin and hair rejuvenation at Mount Sinai, which is a New York hospital, says that they're really excited about it. And he says, quote, with this SCUBE 3 molecule, we're hoping to have a more precise understanding of the signaling that controls hair growth. It would be great to have another pathway to treatments, end quote. Okay, so that's pretty vague in my opinion. That's what I would expect him to say. And of course, there are no treatments designated as of yet. But it is exciting. That is a pretty strong endorsement. Moving on to a professor of dermatology based in Northwestern University by the name of Rui Hesed 
Quote, there's a big difference between a human and a mouse. Mice have short hair that grows just long enough to cover their bodies. Uh, end quote. Okay, that cracked me up so much. <laughs> Of course, humans are very different from mice. We don't actually know. There's no, there's no, I mean, yes, they tried a human hair follicle, but that is not the same as testing it in humans yet. So that is a big bridge to gap. What are my thoughts on the matter? Well, by all indications, I think that if they're saying five years, it is probably actually much more than that. FDA, you know, trials and stuff take a very long time. And we don't even know how this would be injected. We don't know. It's not as if it's in its early stages of human treatment. It has only been treated in mice. And as we know, most of that kind of stuff does not come to fruition. Of course, I'm not a molecular biologist, so take this all with a grain of salt. I do worry that if it becomes an injectable treatment, that that is gonna be a barrier to entry for a lot of us suffering from hair loss. You know, some of us don't have the money because it'll probably be very expensive, would be my guess. And not only that, I mean, some of us just don't have that kind of access to healthcare. I suspect if it isn't injectable, it will be something sort of like in the realm of Botox. And I think with Botox and other injectables, there is still a present but diminishing sense of stigma about them, which kind of makes me sad. It shouldn't be that way, but it still is. And some people may avoid that kind of treatment if that is the case. The other thing that was clear to me that this is only really targeted for androgenetic alopecia. There is nothing said in any of these reports about you know, telogen effluvium, alopecia areata, and other forms of hair loss. Strictly pattern baldness. And the other thing that's a complete, we don't know, is what the side effects could be. It could have really devastating side effects. Of course, again, not a molecular biologist, but because it's never been tested in humans, that we just have no idea what, we know what the good is, but we have no idea what the bad could be. I think overall though, this is really, really great news and something to be really encouraged by for those of us who have dealt with hair loss and are worried about hair loss for our future. Anytime they pinpoint a new molecule that, that they don't know and have not, pinpointed before. I think that is really an important step forward for humankind and understanding the human body and coming up with treatments because they've developed so many things. It is just wild. There's no cure for hair loss yet, but you know what? This could be the first step. Maybe in 10 years it will be reversed and this will be like an interesting artifact of history, this video <laughs> and the news surrounding it. So there you have it, the newest and latest on hair loss treatments. I hope that you found that interesting. Please remember to like if you did. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.